Okay, so the next question is by Burke Koslar, um, and I think that English isn't his mother tongue, but I'm, I'm still gonna read his full comment, his full question. I apologize if the English isn't that correct, but I do think you guys will be able to understand the question. Hello, I really enjoy your videos and hope you will keep doing it. I definitely will. So here's my question. I do have one adult cat on my garden. I raised her and now I have also new baby cat with me in the house. And good lady, I really love birds and I have one cute bajerigar. Don't know what that is. But those things not interest about my question, laughing out loud. Three years ago, I heard some nasty voices near my treehouse and I saw an owl. I was like happy and frightened because I had that little cat, but I really love birds. Also, so I decided to do not scare him off two days later. He brought his girlfriend, laughing out loud, and they used to live near me. I didn't try to tame them or anything, we are all living in together. Two years before I start to throw them food, but not much like when I'm preparing some food for my cat with variety meat. I give them also some of it like one bowl. I wonder, is it start to make them even lazier and causing them to forget, to forget their hunting skills? I'm not doing it every day, though like once in a week or twice max. I also heard they have a baby now. Okay, so to sum it up, I think he wants to ask if it's okay if he throws food at wild owls. Um, he's afraid that it will make them lazy and unable to hunt um, later on. So yeah, that's the question. Um, okay, so have you actually seen the owls taking the food? Because you describe that you give the owls cat food, you know, food with meat in it, but owls don't eat all meat and they definitely do not eat um, processed meat. Uh, owls only eat mice, rats, rabbits, one day old chicks. So if you are throwing food at them that they normally don't eat, they won't even touch it. If they are eating the food you're throwing at them, then you should stop immediately because it sounds to me like the food you're giving them might kill them. Um, yeah, uh, owls do not eat meat that we can buy in the grocery stores. They only eat raw meat from one day old chicks, mice, rats, rabbits, pigeons, etc. The food you're describing in your question is not okay at all to give to owls and I highly doubt that the wild owls have ever tasted your food because one, they are wild owls they hunt live prey and they aren't used to eating animals that are already dead. So that's the first thing I want to say. And second of all, the food you're giving them isn't natural to them, so instinctively they're not going to touch it. So you should, honestly, you should stop doing it. Um, they will survive, they will hunt for themselves and for their babies and you shouldn't help them. You're not helping by helping them, if you know what I mean. <laughs> So honestly, I think you should stop immediately. You're not really helping them. Um, and even if you would give them the right food, like mice, rats, or one day old chicks, I doubt that they would even accept it. So you don't need to help them. Um, they will survive. They will hunt for themselves and their babies, you know? Another question by Anne Barker. How can you both splint an owl's leg and do you have to give them an extra boost of vitamins with their mice and rats? I've seen a few videos about owl legs being splinted, but they don't really show how you do it in a crisis when a vet isn't close. I do know how to splint an owl's leg. I've never done it because it's never been necessary, but I do know how to do it, but I won't do it to Lucky unless it's absolutely necessary, so it's hard to show you guys. Uh, but I will try to make a video about it in the future. Um, I'll try to figure out a way to show you guys without um, doing it to Luki. Um, we'll see. A question by Iubi. How do you transport Luki when you go by train or car? 
Well, I put her in a transport box. There are special transport boxes for owls. I'll show you a picture of one. But you can also choose to transport them in um, transport boxes for cats and dogs, like this one. Because I've noticed that Luki gets carsick when I put her in an owl transport box. She gets less carsick when I put her in a transport box for cats and dogs. So yeah, I just wanted you guys to know that. Fahad Sayed asked, how many years do owls live? And how old is Luki? For how much did you get her? Because I have heard barn owls are way too expensive. How can we recognize the gender of an owl? Okay, so I already told you guys that Luki is about 5 years old. How old an owl gets depends on the species and on how it was raised. An owl can become 10 up to 35 years old. It depends on the species and also on how the owl was raised. If you feed a baby owl the right food, it will grow up to become a strong owl with a strong immune system and strong healthy bones. So chances are that it will grow older than an owl that didn't get the right food when it was young. It's also important to know that owls in captivity can become 10 up to 35 years old, but owls in the wild only become one or two years old. I've also already talked about the price of barn owls in this video. It's actually a very cheap species. Um, it will cost you between 50 euros and 100 euros. Breeders can ask more if they want, but they usually ask 70 or 80 euros for a barn owl. If you want to be sure what gender your owl is, then you need to pluck some of its chest feathers and send it to a lab because otherwise you cannot be 100% sure. There are physical differences between males and females. Um, female owls have a bigger facial shield, you know, the heart-shaped shield is bigger in females than in males. Females are also heavier than males and females are just bigger in general. But, you know, sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. So if you want to be sure about your owl's gender, then you need to uh, pluck some chest feathers. This kind of hurts the owl, so I choose not to do it, and send them to a lab. Andre Munoz asked, Since Loki is a captive owl, you already told us that she's unable to hunt prey on her own. But how would her behavior be like if she meets a male, mates with him, lays eggs and raise their owlets? It would be possible to breed with Luki, she would mate with another barn owl, but she still wouldn't go hunt for her babies. This is because she was born in captivity and she doesn't know how to hunt. So what breeders do when they breed owls is they just go lay the food in the owl's nests. And then the mother will give the food to her babies. Tierra Julius asked, what is Luki's favorite thing to do? Sitting in trees and looking around and falling asleep in the tree. <laughs> um, she also loves going on walks, but whenever I go for a walk with her, I always take a moment to put her in a tree or on a bench, or I just put her somewhere where she can sit quietly and just enjoy the environment, and she really loves that. That's her favorite thing to do. She also asked, what is your favorite thing to do with Luki? Um, making videos. Amigo Medhat asked me, I was wondering how many times does a barn owl eat a day and what else could they eat other than one day old chicks and mice? Thank you. Well, adult barn owls only eat one time a day. So when I give Lucky two one day old chicks, I give the two chicks at once and she will eat the first one and then when she's hungry again she will choose to eat the second one. So she usually doesn't touch the second chick until after a few hours, uh, but that's okay. And, and when I fly her I cut one one day old chick in pieces and I will fly Luki until she has eaten all of the pieces and then I will reward her with the second one day old chick, but that chick I will give uh, entirely. So. She will come one last time to me 
and then I will give her the second chick and I will put her back on her perch with the chick. So adult owls only eat one time a day even though they eat multiple chicks a day. What else could they eat other than one day old chicks and mice? About the food there isn't really anything else you can give them um, except for you know a piece of rabbit, pigeon, hamster, guinea pig. Barn owls can eat those things as well. They also hunt after rabbits for example in the wild but you should only give rabbits, pigeons, etc. all the things I just named occasionally because they are power foods um, and you can't give a whole rabbit at once you just give some pieces of rabbit my mentor gives his raptors uh, pieces of rabbit, pigeons, guinea pigs etc. Uh, when his raptors are sick because chances are more likely then that the raptor will heal without having to visit a vet because these foods are power foods but if you overdo it your owl can literally drop dead so you can't really give your barn owl anything else than mice and rats and one day old chicks there are owl species that eat mainly insects but you will always have to supplement occasionally with a mouse, a rat or a one day old chick so if you aren't comfortable with giving your owl mice, rats or one day old chicks you shouldn't get an owl Alma K asked, how old is Loki and where in Germany do you live? If you are near me, I would love to visit. Ah, you're always welcome, but I don't live in Germany. A lot of people think I'm German or even French or even Dutch, but I am from Belgium, so I am Belgian. Belgium is not the same as the Netherlands. They are two separate countries. And it's true that there are parts in Belgium um, where they speak French. That's why we are taught to speak French in school, but most people in Belgium speak Dutch. My last name though is German, Emmerman is with two times N at the end and uh, it's a German name, but I am completely Belgian. It's also true that there's a small part in Belgium where people speak German. So yeah, I do not live in Germany, I live in Belgium. Um, I actually live in a city called Hove. I was born in Morzel, which is another city that is really close to Hove. And um, Hove is a part of Antwerp. You guys have probably already heard of Antwerp. It's pretty famous. Um, it's a nice city. You should visit it. But yeah, I do not live in Antwerp itself. I live in Hove, which is nearby Antwerp. Brandon Zek asked, Hello, love watching and learning with you and Luki. My question is, will Luki ever develop the need to mate since she was raised indoors? Yes, it would be possible for Luki to develop the need to mate sometime because barn owls um, sometimes try to mate on your head, <laughs> which is really funny, but she has never done it to me. So until now, so far so good. And it's, it's not like she will develop the need to mate, it's just... A natural behavior um, so it's not because she's trying to mate with your head that you should feel sorry for her that she can't have sex um, it's not a sign that you should start breeding with her or anything um, it's just normal Flore Di Angelo asked hello I'm new in here haha <laughs> I have a female burrowing owl of a year and a month already her name is Athenia that's a really beautiful name and super suitable for a burrowing owl. Good job! Um, so I was wondering if it's hard to handle an owl in heat, always based on your experience with Luki. And about cuddling, owls really enjoy of getting scratched under the ear, because mine kinda lays that part of her in my hand when getting in cuddling mood. She also tries to preen me, haha, <laughs> she's so cute. Um, so, no, it's not hard to handle an owl in heat. In summer, it gets really hot here in Belgium sometimes. And the only thing you shouldn't do when it's really hot is fly your owl when it's the hottest time of day. Because your owl can get a heart attack. So, if it's really hot in summer, you should wait to fly your owl until the evening when it has cooled down a bit. If it stays really hot though, you shouldn't fly your owl at all that day. 
Owls enjoy cuddling, but I don't know if they enjoy to be cuddled uh, under the ear because the ears are really sensitive. This, this is... Where is your ear? Let's see where your ear is. Oh, here is the ear. Let's see what she does. Nope, she doesn't especially like that, I think. To be honest, I don't think they like it because the ears are really sensitive. But hey, each owl is different and it's very possible that your owl does like it. But if your owl lays her head in your hand, as you say, when she gets in cuddling mood, it might be possible that she really likes it. So as long as she's not trying to uh, make you understand that she doesn't like it, go ahead. Uh, you will definitely notice if she doesn't like it. She will either bite you or warn you by making a certain sound. And, you know, the longer you have your owl, the more you will learn about the different noises they make and what it means. So you will definitely notice if she doesn't like it. So don't worry. Ashton Victoria asked, um, Your owl is very adorable. I love owls. I have a couple of questions. What can owls eat? What are they allergic to? So what owls eat depends on the species. Most owls eat um, small mammals such as mice, rats, one-day-old chicks, small birds. Uh, but there are also species who eat mealworms, insects. So yeah, it really depends on the species. Owls aren't really allergic to anything. Just don't give them human food because they can't digest it and also it lacks a lot of essential vitamins uh, and minerals. But certain products we use are poisonous to owls, such as um, anti-flea products for your dog or cat will kill your owl. Um, the sprays we sometimes use to keep spiders away from our house um, can kill your owl. But this is not because owls are allergic to those products, it's just because it are chemical products and owls are really sensitive. There is one food in particular that is extremely toxic for all birds, so not only owls, and that is avocado. I have planned to make a separate video about this the next few days, so stay tuned for that. But avocado is really toxic for all birds. Of course, I already mentioned a few seconds ago that you shouldn't give human foods to your owl, so if you respect that rule, you would never give avocado to your owl. But I will make a separate video about avocados and birds. The next question was asked to me in Dutch, so I will first read it in Dutch and then respond to it in Dutch, and then I will read it in English and respond to it in English. Rianne van der Laan vroeg, is Lucky wel eens ziek geweest? En zo ja, wat heeft ze dan gehad? Hoe oud is Lucky en hoe oud ben jij? Wat vinden jullie het leukste om samen te doen? Wat was jullie leukste moment tot nu toe? Heb je ooit wel eens een fout gemaakt bij het trainen of opvoeden van Lucky? Oké, okay, leuke vragen. Lucky is gelukkig nog nooit ziek geweest, dus ik ben er ook nog nooit mee naar de dierenarts gemoeten. Um, dus ja, ik kan u ook niet zeggen wat ze gehad heeft, want ze heeft nog niets gehad. Um, Lucky is 5 jaar oud en ik zelf ben 31 jaar. Shh. <laughs> wat vinden wij het leukste om te doen? Wat ik super leuk vind is Luki meenemen naar allerlei plaatsen. Ik heb al gezegd dat ik heel graag met Luki op wandel ga. Maar Luki vindt het eigenlijk nog leuker als we bijvoorbeeld naar een uh, valkeniersdemonstratie gaan. En ze zit daar tussen andere vogels. Uh, ze komt niet overeen met andere vogels, maar um, ze vindt het wel leuk om gewoon ook stil te zitten op een andere plaats. Omdat ze dat heel interessant vindt. Ze valt dan lekker in slaap, ze is relaxed en op die momenten ervaren wij ook hoe sterk onze band is. Als ik naar een valkeniersdemonstratie ga, heeft ze mij vaak heel hard nodig. Dan wil ze constant van haar springel op mijn schoot springen, ze wil constant geknuffeld worden, ze wil constant aandacht, ook van andere mensen. Um, en ik merk dat ze daar echt heel erg van geniet en ja, ik geniet er ook heel erg van. Dus ik neem ze heel graag mee naar valkeniersdemonstraties en uh, de boogschietclub. Um, en voor de rest gaan we heel graag wandelen. Uiteraard nemen we ook graag samen filmpjes op. We kijken graag samen tv en we knuffelen graag. Wat was jullie leukste moment tot nu toe? Hmm. Ik kan niet echt 
kiezen. Ik denk dat een van de leukste momenten was op de Animals Convention in Antwerpen. Um, Luki bloeide daar echt helemaal open en ze maakte ook connectie met een autistisch kindje. En uh, dat deed mij echt heel veel plezier. Dat kindje bloeide helemaal open uh, toen dat ze Luki zag en mocht strelen. En dat was gewoon fantastisch om te zien dat een uil gebruikt kan worden om mensen met autisme te helpen om toch een soort van connectie te krijgen of te maken met andere mensen, mensen die ze zelfs niet kennen. Dat is echt een magisch gevoel. Ja, ik, ik krijg echt kippenwel nu dat ik dat vertel. Um, ik zal de link naar die video ook wel in de beschrijving van deze video zetten, zodat je er nog eens naar kan kijken. In die video zet ik het ook op het scherm wanneer het autistisch meisje Lucky ontmoet. Dus als je dat moment wil bekijken, kan je gewoon klikken op de link naar die video die ik in de beschrijving zal zetten. Heb ik ooit wel eens een fout gemaakt uh, bij het trainen of opvoeden van Luki? Jazeker, um, de fout die ik heb gemaakt was dat ik Luki uh, een periode te veel heb los laten vliegen in mijn studio. Ik woonde toen nog niet in dit huis, ik woonde nog in mijn studio. En die studio had een uh, soort van mezzanine. En ik had in de valkeniertraining geleerd dat je je uil nooit mag toelaten om hoger te zitten dan jou, want dan wordt hij dominant. Um, en ja, ik heb dit wel toegelaten. Luki vloog wanneer ze vrij was altijd op de mezzanine. Um, en in het begin haalde ik ze er elke keer af, maar na een paar seconden vloog ze er telkens weer op. En dus heb ik het wel toegestaan. En daardoor is ze toch wel territoriaal gedrag gaan vertonen. Nu weet ik niet of dit ook nog gebeurd zou zijn als ik deze fout niet had gemaakt. Want het is wel vrij normaal dat je uil territoriaal wordt na een tijd. Um, maar het zou kunnen dat Luki dit minder had gekregen als ik ze niet... Uh, zo die kwals op de mezzanine had laten zitten. Dus laat het inderdaad niet toe dat je uil te hoog gaat zitten. Um, en laat je uil ook niet uren aan een stuk los in het huis. Je uil heeft dit eigenlijk niet nodig. Um, een paar minuutjes is meer dan genoeg. En eigenlijk moet je uil zijn beweging krijgen van het feit dat jij je uil vliegt. Um, hem gewoon los laten vliegen in huis creëert geen respect. Uh, respect tussen een uil en een mens wordt onder andere gecreëerd door het vliegen voor voedsel. Uh, dit schept een hele sterke band en het is de gezondste vorm van beweging. Dus je mag je uil thuis wel loslaten, maar best niet te lang, want dan wordt je uil een beetje dominant en bazig. En dan kan je uil het echt wel hoog in zijn bol krijgen. Dit klinkt raar, maar het is zo. Voor de rest kan ik niet zeggen dat ik echt fouten heb gemaakt. Althans, ik uh, merk er toch niks van. En mijn mentor is altijd erg verbaasd door hoe gezond Luki nog steeds is na al die jaren. En hij bewondert ook wel echt hoeveel ik ermee doe. Want er zijn wel veel mensen die ook op een verantwoordelijke manier een uil houden, maar die er toch minder verschillende dingen mee doen dan ik. En op zich is daar niks mis mee. Maar ja, het is gewoon altijd beter om je uil gestimuleerd te houden. Oké, okay, so, um, Rianne van der Laan asked, Has Luki ever been sick? And if yes, what did she have? How old is Luki and how old are you? Um, what do you guys enjoy the most to do together? Or what activity do you guys enjoy the most? Um, what was your nicest moment until now? And have you ever made a mistake in training or raising Luki? So, Luki has never been sick, so I can't tell you what she had, because she's never been sick before. Um, she's five years old, I already told you guys that, and I'm 31 years old. Shh. <laughs> what do you guys enjoy the most to do together? Um, we love going to special places, like for example, falconry events. Luki actually just sits there between the other birds. And she doesn't get along with the other birds, so there always needs to be a safe distance between her and the other birds. But when she is at a falconry demonstration, she gets very vulnerable. She really needs me when we are there. Um, when she sits there, she wants to be cuddled all of the time and she wants attention all of the time, not only from me, but also from other people. And I really enjoy to see that. It creates an even stronger bond. I also love taking her to the archery club um, because, yeah, she gets really social and nice there. 
she's always nice, but when she's at these kinds of events, she gets extra cuddly and we both enjoy that. What was your nicest moment until now? I think the nicest moment until now was going to the animals convention with her in Antwerp. She just had such a good time, I don't know how to say it in English, she was radiant, she was so happy there. And also what gave me a lot of joy was that um, she connected with an autistic girl there. Um, and it was really special. So I discovered that Luki can actually be used to open up people with autism. Um, I will link the video, because I made a video of that event, um, I will link the video in the description box down below so you guys can go check out the moment with the autistic girl. It was really beautiful. I also mentioned on the screen when the moment with the autistic girl was happening, so you guys can definitely go check out that moment by clicking on the link to that video in the description box down below. So yeah, it was a really magical moment and that's why I enjoyed that day so much. I, I saw that Loki was glowing of happiness and uh, yeah, that made me happy as well. Have I ever made a mistake in raising Luki or in training her? Yes, I have made one mistake that I know of. Um, I used to let her fly freely around my studio when she was young. So um, I didn't live in this house yet. I lived in a small studio and it had a mezzanine. And um, I learned in falconry training that you shouldn't allow your owl to go sit higher than you because they will get dominant and it can cause behavioral problems. So when she was flying around freely in the house, um, I used to get her off of the mezzanine whenever she flied up there in the beginning, but she always flied back up there after a few seconds. So, and I got tired of it, so I just stopped getting her back off of the mezzanine every time. So yeah, I allowed her to sit higher than me and it caused her to be territorial. Um, so whenever people come to my house, she will act territorial towards them. She's like, this is my house and you're not coming in, you're an intruder. I don't know if she would still have this behavioral problem if I wouldn't have made this mistake, but it's possible that uh, she would still have the problem because a lot of owls get territorial no matter what you do. So, so it's kind of normal, but you should try to avoid it uh, by not allowing your owl to go sit higher than you. Also, don't let your owl fly freely around the house for too long. Um, it can make your owl bossy and there's no need for it. Your owl will only fly around for a few minutes and then it will go sit somewhere, usually higher than you. Um, you can let your owl fly freely around the house, but only allow it for a few minutes. You know, a few minutes every day is enough. And to be honest, the best exercise you can give your owl is training it. And by that I mean flying it. And not just letting it fly freely around the house, but letting it fly towards you. Um, this creates a stronger bond between the two of you and um, letting your owl fly for its food creates respect. It creates mutual respect. Your owl will respect you more if you let it work for its food. So yeah, that's a mistake that I've made. And I finished answering the question, so <laughs> next question!